Hello everyone, Chaos here and welcome to another old school RuneScape video. Today, my revamped 1 to 99 Slayer Guide. The Slayer skill gives your character the ability to defeat certain monsters that need a particular item to be slain, either weapon or equipment, or some that just require the level to learn how to fight them to gain more experience and money. Slayer is arguably the most popular skill in the game because of the amount of variety and how much profit you are able to make. But don't be fooled. When trained casually, it can actually be the slowest skill in the entire game. This is the last revamped 1 to 99 guide on the channel for now. So for the grand finale, I would be really grateful if you subscribe with notifications on, drop a cheeky like for the YouTube algorithm, as well as checking out the join button below to further support the channel. These are all the quests that provide Slayer experience as of the time of making this video. Remember that some of them have a Slayer level of requirement and you may not be able to do them right away. The only two quests I recommend for early Slayer experience are the Varrock Museum Natural Quiz for 1000 experience, although it's technically not a quest, and then Poor Sign of Interest for another 1k. Other than this, any quest that grants Slayer experience will be pretty far off, so keep these two in mind to skip some painful early game. As for what quests I recommend to train Slayer, well, today we are doing something different. Instead of telling you what quests to do, First, I will show you a list of Slayer assignments and what quests unlock said creature for later on. This screenshot is from the RuneScape wiki and, as you can see, we have a vast array of creatures that can only be assigned as a Slayer task after completion of their respective quest. If you don't want any of these as an assignment, simply don't do the quest and it will save you blocks or cancels, but more on how this works later on. Not doing a quest for a specific task may hinder your progress a little bit, because some of them may be a requirement for important quests, so you'll be the judge. I recommend the Dwarf Cannon quest to have access to a Dwarf Multi-Cannon, so you can get over a lot of Slayer tasks quicker. Cannonballs are not super expensive nowadays, but whatever the price, it is always worth for more Slayer experience. And speaking of more experience, I also recommend the Hard or Elite Mauritania and the Current Diary. Respectively, you will unlock the Bone Crusher and the Ash Sanctifier, which you should always take to every single Slayer trip for free prayer experience. You could also do Lunar Diplomacy for access to a Lunar spell called NPC Contact. As you might know, after talking to a certain NPC for the first time, you can cast this spell to contact them remotely, which includes the Slayer Masters. Finally, to gain more experience via something called Bursting, you should do the Desert Treasure quest in order to unlock ancient magic spells. I will talk about more of this later on, and it will be essential for more Slayer tasks. Just like melee and ranged, Slayer makes use of a wide assortment of items you will be swapping around pretty much every task. We will get into the basics later, but for now, have all your combat items for melee, ranged and magic ready. Training Slayer without the Slayer helmet will be like training runecrafting without the essence pouches. Once unlocked, there is no reason not to wear this item in every single one of your trips, so make sure to keep one in the bank at all times. The Expeditious Bracelet is made by enchanting an opal bracelet, and when you wear it and kill a monster during a Slayer task, you have a 20% chance for the kill to count as two, making the task faster on average. On the other hand, the Bracelet of Slaughter is made by enchanting a red topaz bracelet, and it has the opposite effect. When wearing it, if you defeat a monster during a Slayer task, there's a 25% chance that the kill will not count towards the total, making the task last longer, which is great for tasks that provide high experience or cash per monster. Just like previous skills, there's a plugin simply called Slayer that will give you a few visual cues on screen whenever you are out on Slayer trips. Make sure to keep it on at all times for nice quality of life upgrades. Other than that, make sure to activate all your personal favorite PVM plugins to fight the various monsters you will be asked to defeat. You can check some of my favorite ones in my most recent Runelite plugins video to give you an idea. Now, because Slayer is not as straightforward as bank standing skills such as fletching, magic, or even skills like hunter or construction, I will take a few seconds to explain how this guide will function. And then I'll give you all the information you need to forge your own path. We will talk about the basics of Slayer, Slayer Masters, your point streaks and unlocks, tasks to cancel or block and why you should do it, tips to maximize experience, tasks for cash, experience or both, tutorial skipping, and a little segment at the end about Wildy Slayer. Each segment will go into detail to include everything you need to know to give you an overall idea of how you want to train the skill yourself. This because of two reasons. One, Slayer is heavily RNG based because of the task a Slayer Master can assign. And two, because monsters I enjoy killing may not be enjoyable for you. This is why instead of telling you what to do at every level, I am giving you all the information I have learned over the years to find what works for you. That being said, let's begin. Alright, so what is Slayer exactly and how does it work? If you have played any other classic MMO, it's basically one of the generic quests. 
go to this area and kill a certain creature X amount of times, or until you have collected X amount of items dropped by said creature. In Old School RuneScape, you talk to NPCs called Slayer Masters, and they will tell you to defeat a certain number of creatures, each giving you Slayer experience when they perish. When done, and if eligible, you will be given Slayer points which you can use with said Slayer Masters for tons of benefits. After completing multiple tasks in a row, you will be awarded with even more points. Your streak does not reset if you ask different masters for a task. The only exception is the Wilderness Slayer Master, which has her separate task streak. The higher Slayer level, the more creatures will be at your disposal. A Slayer-specific monster doesn't necessarily mean they will give you more Slayer experience when killed, but the more powerful monsters, the more experience they will grant. You have Slayer-specific creatures you only need the level 4, and you can kill without any item requirement like a Spiritual Mage. You have Slayer-specific creatures you can only finish off with an item once they have low HP, like a Lizard. You have Slayer-specific creatures you can only fight and or damage if wearing a special item throughout the entire kill. For example, if you try fighting an Aberrant Spectre without a Nose Peg, they will massively drain your stats and deal heavy damage. Or even a Karask which you may only damage if wearing Leaf-bladed weapons such as an Axe. All of this told you by the Slayer Master before your Slayer trip. Finally, there are areas in the game where monsters for which you need a Slayer assignment are fairly common. For example, the Fremenic Slayer Cave. What's even better though, is that there are areas in the game in which you can only attack monsters if you are on a Slayer assignment for said creature. For example, the upstairs Blue Dragon area in the Taverly Dungeon. You don't need any extra requirements for said rooms other than being on a Slayer assignment for said monster. Of course, we have a ton of little tips to maximize both experience and point gains, so this is what the entire video is all about. Now that we are done with the basics, well, we can't start training Slayer without a Slayer Master, so let's talk a little bit about them. We have a total of 9 Slayer Masters in the game, each with their own pros and cons. I will briefly talk about all of them, location, how to get there, how many points they give you when finishing a task as well as a streak, and towards the end I will give you my general rule of thumb when choosing which one to stick to. Turiel is available on a fresh account and these are the easiest tasks you will be able to do in the game. He is used for something called the Turiel Skipping which is used to farm Slayer points, but more on that later. He does not provide any Slayer points for any task whatsoever, and if you follow the melee guide you should be higher combat level, so realistically there's no reason to be using him as a master outside of skipping. Spria is the newest Slayer Master added in 2020, and to grab a Slayer task from her, all you need to do is the quest to pour a sign of interest. She's almost like Turiel when it comes to the ease of her tasks, as well as giving zero points after an assignment. I do not recommend you train with her whatsoever. And speaking of not training with someone, Maskna is a Slayer Master located in the north entrance of Canifus. Her tasks are pretty bland and you'll be getting an astonishing 2 points per task and a respective point boost after an important streak. Because of all the early game questing you should have done before starting Slayer, you should easily be able to skip her, so no need to go into detail about her tasks. Vanica is located in the Edgeville dungeon, and this is where you will most likely start Slayer quote-unquote seriously. The way to get there is not the best, but his tasks are pretty decent for the combat level 40 requirement outside of Metal Dragons. His task list is incredibly diverse, and you'll be killing from low to high level monsters for 4 points per task. At level 70 combat, and after completing the quest Lost City to access Sonaris, you will be able to talk to the fairy named Chelder for a task. This is where things start balancing out a little bit more, and you'll start having monsters assigned that are more in line with your combat level. You won't be here for too long because levels are going to start flying by in the mid-game for you to move on to the next one. The first of three Slayer Masters we will focus on later on is Konar. She's the second most recent Slayer Master released in Mount Karun along the Kebos Lowlands from Zaya in 2019. Connor has one interesting twist though, and it is that when she assigns a monster, not only will she tell you what to kill, but also where to kill said creatures, giving Slayer more variety in more places to visit. When killing creatures under Connor's assignment, you will have a chance to receive Brimstone Keys. You may use these to open the Brimstone Chest next to Connor for even more loot out of your tasks. The important part about Connor is that she is the only Slayer Master who will be able to assign Hydras in the Mount Karum Slayer Dungeon, and should definitely be camped if you're looking for the pet or the claw. She also gives the highest point per task out of all Slayer Masters outside of Crystallia, of course given you have the elite Karen Diary. Next we have Neve. If you have completed Monkey Madness 2, Steve will take her place after being sat down by Glove. Neve and Steve are great at assigning tasks for which you can use a cannon and get the trips over with quicker, and also a lot of tasks which you can execute at a boss instead of the lesser monster. If you're looking for Jad or Zug tasks, 
and even Steve have the highest chances at offering Tazar tasks, so keep this in mind when hunting for one of those. Oddly enough, Duratel is the only Slayer Master that has a Slayer level requirement of 50 to have an assignment from him, and his tasks are some of the best for both experience and money with a proper block list, which we will see later down the road. He also has great chances to assign monsters which can camp a boss instead of the lesser variant, like Abyssal Demons, Dagonauts, Calphites, Gargoyles, Smoke Devils, and much more. Finally, we have Crystalia. She is the Wilderness Slayer Master, and you need to keep three things in mind when asking her for an assignment. 1. All the monsters must be killed within the Wilderness to count. 2. She has her own separate task streak, so you cannot boost points with her. And 3. She has the highest point payout of all Slayer Masters, obviously because of the risk versus reward factor. Crystalia is great because she can assign monsters like Skeletons, Bears, and Spiders, which you can obviously carry out at Verion, Callisto, and Venonatus, along with their weaker variants, so it's a great way to farm for their uniques. We will go over Wildy Slayer in more detail later in the video, as I'm sure it deserves its own segment. Now, you guys have heard me say the word points and the point streaks a lot throughout this video. So, after every single Slayer task, you will be given a set amount of points depending on the Slayer Master. More importantly, after 10, 50, 100, 250, and 1000 tasks, you will have your points multiplied by 5, 15, 25, 35, and 50 respectively. Again, depending on the Slayer Master you used for a specific task. So, for example, if I do my task number 200 with Konar, it will be a 100 task streak and I will receive 500 Slayer points instead of 20. This, of course, with the Elite Karan Diary. How are these points used and what is the best way to spend them? Well, let's look at the list of unlocks and rewards, tell you the good and the bad about each one, and towards the end of the segment, I will give you my personal unlock path. Go to any Slayer Master and right-click rewards on them for a new interface to open. This will have four tabs at the top. Unlock, Extend, Buy, and Tasks. So, let's start with unlocks. The first four are for you to automatically kill monsters that require the use of an item on them to finish them off when low on health. This is for gargoyles, rock slugs, lizards, and zygomites. I recommend gargoyles only since the other four will be extremely uncommon later on. The next three give you the ability to create slayer-related items, and these are ranged ammunition related to broad items, the slayer helmet, and the slayer ring. I only recommend the slayer helmet as the other two are not that useful for a main account. The following ones are for a Slayer Master to be able to assign other creatures. This means that if you don't want these tasks, simply avoid unlocking them. These are Red Dragons, Mithril Dragons, Aviancies, and Lizardman Shamans. The unlock named the Hot Stuff is for you to have an option to be assigned a Jad or Zuck when given a Tazar task. The unlock named the Bigger and Badder will make it so you have a 1 in 200 chance to spawn a superior variant of Slayer Monsters, and these have a chance to drop special uniques as well as give you more Slayer experience. It is worth pointing out that not every single Slayer creature has a superior variant, so don't get too excited. Lastly, Like a Boss gives Slayer Masters the ability to assign a small amount of bosses to be slain, and these are not just bosses you can kill on other general tasks like the Dagonoth Kings on a Dagonoth task. The cool part about it is that you can choose the amount of bosses you would like to kill ranging from 3 up to a maximum cap depending on your tier of combat achievements. From these, I only recommend Bigger and Badder, as soon as you have 400 points, and Like a Boss once you have above level 93 Slayer, since, like we've said before, bossing is not the most optimal thing to do for experience. The next 7 are purely cosmetic, and for 1000 points each, you can use an item like a boss head on your Slayer helmet to give it a different look. The colors are black for KBD head, green for the Caliphate Queen head, red for the Abyssal head, purple for the Dark Claws from Scotizo, light blue for Vorkad's head, dark green for Hydra heads, and finally a white and grey one with using twisted horns on your Slayer helmet. These should only be unlocked if you have extra points to spare. The next ones are quality of life and the ability to extend the tasks to more creatures beyond what you were assigned. Duly Noted gives Mithril bars when killing Mithril dragons, Stop the Wyvern stops masters from assigning Fossil Island Wyverns, Double Trouble will make it so each Grotas Guardian counts for one Gargoyle KC instead of one for the whole encounter. I Wildy More Slayer lets Crystalia assign more monsters you may fight in the Wildy, and it's pretty nice. Basilocked and Actual Vampire Slayer will make it so you can also kill Basilisk Knights and Firewatch Sentinels on Basilisk and Vampire tasks respectively for chances at the Basilisk Jaw and the Blood Shard. The newest one is Warp the Reality and the master will be able to assign warped creatures in the dungeon where the Path of Glufry takes place. I don't really recommend any of these because they're not great for experience per hour, 
and their uniques are either too rare or not too expensive. The last one is called the Task Storage. This nifty mechanic was added recently, and after you purchase it, you have the ability to go to the Task tab in the interface and spend 50 points to store a task you may want to do, but maybe not right now. I personally use it to stack Slayer tasks for a pet I'm hunting for, so I can have back-to-back -back tasks. When you unstore a task, you are not going to get your points back. Up next we have extensions, and when purchased, your Slayer Master will assign even more of these monsters. We will go over which task to extend, block and cancel in a later segment, so I won't worry too much about it right now. The general rule of thumb is just extending the tasks you like, and the ones you feel are good for cash and experience. The third tab is a Slayer shop in which you spend Slayer points to buy items. Other than the rune pouch and the herb sack, all of these are an absolute scam. And you can get both of the previous items in other ways as to not spend your precious Slayer points. You may simply buy a rune pouch note at the GE, and for the herb sack, your best bet is a tight farm. So quite honestly, avoid this tab like the plague. The fourth and final tab is for you to cancel a Slayer task and to manage your blocked tasks. If you cancel a Slayer task, it will cost the 30 points and will not reset your streak. This is also where you can store a task if you have the ability to do so. If you decide to block a task, you won't be getting an assignment for that monster from any Slayer Master. How it works is that you have to wait to be assigned a task you don't like and then click the block task toward the right. This is going to cost 100 points. You unlock one slot every 50 quest points, and you get a sixth and final one with completion of the Elite Lumbridge Diary. As of the time of making this video, Jagex is pulling the ability to block a seventh task after the total quest points in the game just jumped to 300, thanks to the newest quest, so if that passes, we will have an additional task to cancel. So, boys and girls, after learning about every way to use your points, how do I recommend spending them? First, to get yourself a bigger and better for more experience and the chances at an imbued heart. Then, the ability to make the Slayer Helmet, and after that comes extensions. Save 100 to 300 points to wait on tasks you want to block, and then Gargoyle Smasher. After essential unlocks, get hot stuff for jab tasks, and finally the ability to store Slayer tasks. Any extra points should be saved for cancels and cosmetics like the Slayer Helmets. Okay, it is now time to talk about how you should go about extending, blocking, and canceling out your tasks. Part of this segment will be a little technical, but I'll try to make it so it doesn't sound like a math class. Before we get into it, first we need to understand how tasks are assigned. I will take Duradel for this example. If you go to the wiki, you will see all monsters he is able to assign. The rightmost column is something called weight. At the bottom of the list, you will see something that says total task weight, and then a 301 towards the right. This means that each monster's weight adds up to that 301. And this is basically how likely Duradel is to assign a certain monster. The highest weight on the list is 12 for Abyssal Demons and Bosses, and the lowest is 2 for Adamant Dragons, Zygomites, Rune Dragons and Water Fiends. This means that without any blocks, Duradel has nearly 4% chance to assign Abyssal Demons and Bosses, and less than a 1% chance to assign the less common tasks we mentioned before. What you can do for every master is experience all the Slayer tasks at least once, so you know which ones you like and which ones you don't. Then, go to their wiki page and see which tasks are common and uncommon. And then, follow this general rule of thumb. You completely block high weight monsters, and you cancel low weight monsters you don't like. My block list is Cave Horrors, Aberrant Spectres, Worms, Drakes, Spiritual Creatures and Fire Giants. I don't like to do these, and since I'm still hunting for the Hydra pet, I block the Worms and Drakes because they have the same weight as Hydra, so without them there's a higher chance for me to have that task. When it comes to extensions, this mostly comes down to personal preference, but there's obviously a few winners we should keep in mind. Bloodveld, Dust Devils, Gargoyles, Necreals, Abyssal Demons and Krakens should be good candidates as they offer great experience, cash or AFK times. I personally extend Black Dragons for KVD and Aviancies for longer Armadil trips. Under no circumstances should you extend the Dark Beasts, Ankus, Suquas, Metal Dragons, Spiritual Creatures, Aberrant Spectres and Cave Horrors. This means that Greater Demons, Black Demons, Skeletal Wyverns, Scabarites, Fossil Island Wyverns, Basilisks, Vampires and Revenants should be extended under your own judgement and if you like to do them. Up next I have a few tips for you to maximize experience gains. These are things you can do while training Slayer or preparing for you to squeeze every drop out of your available time. I will paraphrase most of these from one of my previous videos. But Cal, that's lazy and you're recycling your own content! Tip number one is to toggle difficult tasks. 
If you talk to a Slayer Master, you will see an option for them to take your combat level into account when giving an assignment. This will be off by default, but if you ask them to turn this on, you will be assigned any creature on their list regardless of your combat level. This is a double-edged sword because if you can get more experience from higher level monsters, but you are stuck with an annoying task and you have no points to cancel it, well, you're kind of out of luck. Number two is to have a bank tab for General Slayer for all three combat styles. You can learn how to do this in my bank organization video, but with the bank tags and the bank tags layout plugins, you can make tabs for your gear and the inventory setups to quickly go on Slayer trips as soon as you know what you will be fighting. Related to your bank we have number 3, and I recommend having a loot tab for you to just dump your whole inventory after your trip to go for another task. When doing this, you don't have to worry about where your things went, and the less organizing the better. I also show my personal loot tab in the banking video, and I recommend for you to know a few pointers on how to make your own. Next I recommend having teleports to all Slayer Masters you're currently using. Now, you don't have to have the absolute best to teleport, but the less running, the better for you to get another task ASAP. Things like the Karamju Gloves for Duradel, a Spirit Tree in your house for Neaver Steve, Arata's Blessing for Kalnar, and an Amulet of Glory for Crystallian. This of course can be negated with the NPC contact spell, but you won't be able to use the shop if needed right away. We have already talked about this one, but it's so important that we need to elaborate on it. Whenever you are training Slayer, take your cannon whenever possible. Even in single way combat, you will kill your targets way quicker, which obviously translates to more experience per hour. There are only a few spots in the game where cannoning is not allowed like the Catacombs of Karend and the Slayer Cave, but this becomes much better at multi-combat areas to dispose of your targets much quicker. Like I've said many times before, some people may crucify me for this one, so I will word it very carefully. If you're focused on 99 Slayer and you want quick experience, avoid bossing at all costs. Bosses, especially in Slayer tasks, can be a great source of profit, but without proper levels and gear, you're not gonna be super efficient. So you're better off killing the lesser variant of a boss and keep at it. The last tip I have for you is to use Expeditious and Slaughter Bracelets appropriately. Remember that Expeditious makes the trip shorter, and the latter has the opposite effect. Use the first one on Turial Skipping, or a bad task you do want to get over quicker. The Bracelet of Slaughter should be used at places that offer great experience and cash per hour, like Bursting Tasks. This is all I have for this segment outside of efficient block lists for experience and cash, as well as Bursting and the use of the Veni Bow, both of which will have their own segment. If you're watching at this point, make sure to leave us a comment below with your tips on how to maximize your Slayer gains. With everything we have learned so far, it is now time for a small segment on what weapons and armor I recommend to make Slayer training more enjoyable, because you'll be hitting higher numbers. I will show you melee, ranged and mage setups for mid, late and end game. In the mid game we have a Dragon Scimitar with a torso, obi legs and a defender for melee, a magic shortbow imbued and rune arrows with at least a blue dragon hide and snakeskin boots. For magic we have Mystics and the new Warped Scepter, along with a God Book and a God Cape. You won't be doing a ton of damage, but the monsters you'll be facing are not going to be super tough either. For the late game, upgrade to a Whip or Tentacle Whip, and after making a bit of cash you could get yourself some Bandos Tacits to upgrade the leg slot. For ranged get yourself a Blowpipe with Amethyst Darts and the Blessed Dragonhide pieces. Magic will see a pretty big upgrade to Arims, along with the Trident of the Swamp and the Alinus Ward. Don't forget your occult necklace for that insane damage bonus. I will avoid having best in slot items for the end game, meaning that we want full bandos and prims for melee, along with either a rapier or a fang, and an amulet of torture. Range sees the least amount of changes, so if you don't have a rigor at this point, unlock it as soon as possible. Finally, for magic, you are going to upgrade to Virtus and the Tormented Bracelet with an imbued god cape. A Sagwadesti staff is not really needed for Mage Slayer unless it's a Kraken. We are now taking a few moments to talk about tasks where you can burst, barrage, or use the Venator Bow to attack multiple monsters at once. As you know, the burst and barrage spells in the Ancient Spellbook are 3x3 three three area of effect damage spells, which can hit multiple monsters at once up to a cap. The best places to do this at are Ankus, Dust Devils, Necreals, and Abyssal Demons at the Catacombs of Current. You may also apply this to Smoke Devils in the Smoke Devil Dungeon, and Tassars, just to mention a few. When you get one of these tasks, go to the respective multi-combat area with your best magic gear and spell available, excluding ice spells for abyssal demons, and then tag all of them, for example with an iron dart. Once all of them are on you, move like this between diagonal tiles for them to stack on top of each other. When they occupy the same space, click on them to start attacking. Both magic and slayer experience will be absolutely insane, and this will make for ridiculously quick tasks. 
Technically speaking, you can also do this with Chinchompas, but magic will be better. With the addition of the Benator Bow, you may also attack multiple targets in the multi-combat area to both AFK and dispose of more monsters quicker. Some of the best places to use it are the Lighthouse Basement for Dagonauts, and pretty much any monsters in the Catacombs of Corinth. And again, the Smoke Devil Dungeon. It will be a great alternative to train ranged along Slayer if you ever get yourself a Venator Bow, which is honestly not that expensive to get. Alright boys and girls, now for an important segment you have probably been waiting for. We are taking a look at tasks to focus on for experience and then GP. I am not counting Crystalia because she's used mostly for point farming, and you should always do every task in the most efficient way possible, which is our next segment. I will assume you are using either Neaver Steve, Connor or Duradel, since those are the ones you should be using after level 70 combat, which makes for most of your experience and the path to 99. Some of these will overlap between Slayer Masters, so always do them when you have a chance. For experience you are going to do Abyssal Demons, Anku, Bloodveld, Dagonauts, Dust Devils, Gargoyles, Calphites, Necreals, Smoke Devils, Trolls, Tazar or Jad, Greater Demons, Hellhounds, and Jellies. Keep in mind you should always do these by either barraging or attacking from a distance with a cannon even on single way combat area, such as Hellhounds, even at the Taverly Dungeon to damage them quicker. If you want more profit, either consistent or from expensive uniques, I recommend Basilisk Knights, Demonic Gorillas on a Black Demon Task, The Kraken, Dust Devils, Gargoyles, Kurasks, Lizardman Shamans, Necreals, Skeletal Wyverns, Firewatch Sentinels, and Smoke Devils. What I'm about to say pretty much contradicts the tip I gave you about no bossing until High Slayer, but if you want to start dipping your toes into PvM, I recommend doing bosses on a Slayer task for higher damage output, and therefore more experience per hour. Try things such as Vorkath on a Blue Dragon task, Cerberus on a Hellhound task, the Thermonuclear Smoke Devil, and even the Alchemical Hydra. So, something you have heard me mention a lot throughout the video is Turiel skipping. If you remember, you receive additional points when hitting a specific number of tasks in a row, and that your streak does not reset if talking to multiple masters. We can use this to our advantage and do the following. Check your streak, and if you're not about to hit a 10th task, talk to Turiel and ask him for an assignment. He will give you something easy like cows, bears, minotaurs, and so on. Wear your Expeditious Bracelet and you will be done with the task in under 3 minutes. Repeat this until you are at your 9th task before a multiple of 10. You are then going to hit up your favorite Slayer Master that isn't Crystallia, and you will have a regular assignment. If you have the Elite Current Diary, it's almost mandatory that you do the task with Konar because she grants the highest amount of points per task. When you finish the assignment, you will be given even more Slayer points, and you just need to rinse and repeat until you have enough points for whatever you need. On screen you have been seeing notable areas to carry out your tutorial tasks for you to do them quicker with the cannon. The second to last segment has to do with Wildy Slayer. I have this as a separate part in the guide because it's a little more specific and being in the Wildy is of course going to be high risk at high reward. If you have a Slayer task from a master that isn't Crystallia, for which you can progress with monsters found in the Wildy, you can choose to do them there, although it's not going to be the smartest option. On the other hand, if you ask Crystallia for a Slayer task, you will only be able to progress through monsters killed within the Wilderness. Most of the tasks can be done at the Wilderness Slayer Cave, and the entire place is multi-combat. This is a double-edged sword because you can use both a cannon and barrage for every single task, but if PKRs get you, well, chances are you're pretty screwed if you don't have a Royal Seedbot. The best part about Wilderness Slayer is that the risk versus reward factor is also found in the point system. Since Crystallia will grant a 25 points per tasks, and all the multipliers for higher tier streaks will be absolutely massive. On screen you are seeing a few viable setups for all 3 combat styles, and if you die, you won't be losing a ton of GP. Make sure to protect those wieldy weapons at all costs, and by going in there with Protect from Item On, you'll avoid being as blasted by PKers. Ladies and gentlemen, we come to the most crucial part of the video, the roadmap showing the best ways to achieve level 99, putting together everything we have learned so far. And let me tell you what, this one is going to be a little anticlimactic. From levels 1 to 13, you will do the Varrock Museum quest and the Poor Sign of Interest. And from 13 to 99, you are going to do whatever the hell you want. Now, hear me out. Outside of melee and ranged, Slayer is pretty much the only skill which will have you going around different places in the game, so this is one of the skills I chose to go with the flow and just enjoy a mix of profit, sweat, AFK, and even a little bit of bossing. Skills like construction, hunter, fishing, woodcutting and so on will have you follow the most efficient path to 99 in order to get the skill out of the way quickly. On the other hand, Slayer is pretty popular because it is just so diverse, and you literally cannot do anything in specific to 99 because of the random nature of the skill. 
I mean, sure, you could stick to bursting tasks, profitable tasks, or AFK tasks, but the beauty of Slayer is switching it up every task, and that is why for this one only guide, my recommendation to reach level 99 is just to have fun and try every single task and boss to figure out what you enjoy. But again, you can follow all the tips and advice you have seen so far in order to make Slayer either fast by bursting, profitable by killing creatures that drop tons of cash, or AFK by using the Dwarf Cannon and the Venny Bow in multi-combat areas. So, make sure to go over all of the tips carefully to forge your own path towards that shiny Slayer cape. Scapers, we come to the end of the video, thank you so much for watching. Not only this guide, but also any 1-99 to guide you may have come across the way. You have no idea how much fun this has been, and honestly, it made the 2023 fly by, as this series has taken a whole 10 months with bi-weekly uploads. I want to give a massive, chunky, and girthy thank you to all the channel members. Your support means the world to my family and I, and I hope to continue providing quality RuneScape content for you to enjoy. If you want to be part of this list of legends, click the join button below to see all the cool perks and rewards you can get in the videos, in the live stream, and of course in the Discord. In the next one, we will have a special video going over a few tips on how to max efficiently, which will actually be the grand finale to the 1 to 99 series. I hope you're looking forward to it, but for now, I hope you have an amazing day, have an amazing week, and I will see you then. Ba -ba -ba -ba. A peace.